to this week's garden video. We have a heat wave. And yeah, I'm sure anytime we say there's a heat wave and I say the temperature, people in hotter regions are like, girl, <laughs> that's not hot. But Irish people, we can't handle the heat. Like, so at the moment, according to me, watch it says it's 23 degrees it's to get to like 25 or 27 on the L weather app love talking about the weather so today in the garden is more maintenance and just minding it it's to be warm for the whole week it has been warm the weekend last night i cut the grass it's too warm i have to wait until in the evening to like do strenuous jobs and um, in this video, I'm going to do some just deadheading maintenance. I'll show you around the garden because I was in Hampton last week at the flower show. And when I came back, loads of plants just arrived. And I love these weekly videos because it's great to look back and see, you know, when that flower bed was in full bloom in spring and how it's looking now and like in high summer. So I'm after being in the garden center, I got three plants because I have gaps in the front border and I was just waiting to see how the other plants were kind of growing. The Nipita, the catmint that I put in earlier in the year is tiny. I'd say that's going to be great next year. Um, so sort of, I'm conscious of there's a lot of new plants in that border. So in the evening, I've just been watering them to make sure that they're happy. Generally with watering, I do it in the evening and I only have to, if it doesn't rain, once a week, a good soak. However, my two hydrangea Annabelles are very thirsty. Here's Miss Blondie. The hydrangea Annabelle, I have to water every second evening. The leaves just go meow and the mop heads just go meow. That's what I've been doing. Still loads of strawberries. Potatoes are almost ready. The foliage is dying back, I'll show you that. And yeah, so I think the first thing I'm gonna do is let's plant the three plants. I'll talk you through why I picked them. And then let's do some cozy, just maintenance in the garden. Low impact this week. We ain't chopping, cutting. Um, I do have the flower bed in the front. The alliums have now gone spent, they're over. Um, so I think I might tidy that flower bed and I might put some lettuce in it for the rest of summer. Um, I have lots of space in it so I could even do half lettuce and then something else. So let's get into the garden. Miss Blondie is actually, you're kind of enjoying the sunshine, aren't you? <laughs> she is like, I mean, <laughs> look at her face. Sometimes she gets a bit grumpy in the heat, but actually she has been enjoying it, haven't you? Yes, yes, friend. Okay, let's go into the garden. Also, this is what I'm reading in the evenings when I'm sitting outside um i've been having oh sorry my straps in the way i bought this actually when i was doing book signings and i was in a warehouse and i seen this and i bought it and i'm currently using a rock <laughs> to, as a bookmark <laughs> just because i was outside but really interesting read i've only read like this much so far but um getting lots of inspiration from this got on monty don the garden king so these are the plants i picked up so i picked up this verbena, I do have some of this out the back, but this one ha is a different variety and I have two of the Brompton verbenas in here. So I picked this one up because the, see the kind of head on it? It's different to the one that I have. So I'm gonna pop it in the back. I have a gap in here um, between the rows and this. So I'm gonna pop it in there because these grow up nice and tall and they'll give me some like autumn color. Next up, I have, I don't know what the name of this is, kind of looks like a Shasta daisy. And it already has some flowers on it, but again, it's like that late summer color. So it'll give me um, a bit of color. So this is the gap here that I'm going to pop them in. And then I got this guy, which is an Estrantia. I don't think I have any of these. Yeah, cause I've got, no, they're Alceus. And Achilles, <laughs> Astrantia. Perfect for little cottage gardens. I love the top of this, love the detail. So I'm gonna pop that in as well. So I have three of these, so I'm hoping they'll just add pop color. I also went for yellow on this one because I have the yellow of the rose up there and then the kind of whitey yellow color of this. And then down on the border, I have like purples, um, 
from the hardy geraniums so I thought this would kind of pick up on that. Also Achillea I think that is, is absolutely adorable, very cottagey, very pink, it's after opening up, lovely. Um, as you can see Nepita is kind of starting to flower but I only put these in the border I think it was, was it May? I have some here and I have some here. I think I planted five of them and they're not really growing yet, but I do think maybe next year they'll be nice and big. Like this one has lovely flowers on it already, but I think next year that will just kind of get better. Also, I popped in somewhat, now I don't know what this is, um, I think it's a, a weed. Sorry if there's, a, there's an airplane going over. Um, oh, it feels lovely and fluffy on the inside. I planted borage. Maybe this is borage, I'm not sure. I don't think this is. This just grew, but I did put some borage seeds in this tire planter because I always have this like as a wildlife thing. And yeah, they feel a bit fluffy maybe it is borage but i know the bees absolutely love it so i decided to give it a bash Okay, so I popped in those new additions to the border. I'll wait until tonight. I watered them as I was putting them in just to, so there be no air kind of pockets around the roots. I'm gonna give you a look around this front border. Last year, this was like half the size and literally had like five plants along the side. So I think I've almost achieved the kind of effect that I want. I want kind of tall, cottage garden things in them um so yeah things that kind of come out with a bit of depth with that verbena will grow up really tall as well so i'm really happy with how this is looking this summer i've got like lots of color lots of foliage as well could probably do like a bit more ground cover but when these nepitas start to grow i don't want to add too much because next year it's probably just going to explode and i'll have the opposite problem i'll end up tinning things out so i'm going to put together a little thing in thingamajiggy of how this border is looking So welcome to the back. We are in full bloom. Some flowers also. For anybody who's new, I didn't plant these. There was a dwarf sunflower that I bought in the garden center last year. It was sitting here. This was really fresh soil from Quick Crop. And I think my niece 
played with the seed and mixed it in and this is what happened. It is an absolute happy accident. They are absolutely huge. <laughs> and one of them has opened. So, hello Mr. Happy Sunflower. This bed of dahlias, there's actually still a few spring onions but I'd say they've gone quite bitter. So I'm going to um, pull up the last of them. As you can see, I have loads of, are they aphids? Is that what they are? I don't use any pesticides in the garden. And I'm just going to leave them on it and maybe, I mean the plant is still going to flower. It seems to just be these guys. I'm just going to leave them and maybe someone will come in and eat them. I have loads of birds popping in. Um, I'm trying to encourage ladybugs and stuff. So who knows? Now, the bed of snapdragons that we planted in a couple of videos back have started to flower. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tidy up the bulbs that I planted. And then this one here has all, aren't the seed heads just so lovely on these? So I need to do something with this bed now that this has passed on. This looked amazing in spring, um, but now it's looking a bit quiet. And all of the bits in front of the greenhouse is just giving me joy. And um, they're my two tomato plants. I do have flowers on them actually. I have flowers here. Um, this hydrangea is starting to open and last year, oh, sorry, I got distracted. Do I have strawberries? Oh, I have a little strawberry there. Um, I'm having a great year on hydrangeas and I think it's because I fed the soil. I fed the soil on everything. I did mulching and stuff, but these are ericaceous. And I put like ericaceous feed into the soil. Sorry, they need ericaceous soil, they're not ericaceous. You know what I mean? And the white one, I've noticed this year, I'm having a much better year. This is just looking beautiful. I have this since 2020. I actually have both of them since 2020. I've kept them alive and I pruned it back in March, fed the soil. I think actually it was a little later than March. I, um, I leave the heads on them over winter and apparently that protects them from frost. Dahlias are all opening. I actually have to do a little bit of deadheading now because um, these ones are just gone spent. So I want to keep on top of the deadheading so we can have plants all um, summer long. This one is just beautiful. This is my fave. It's like a little pom-pom or something. Geraniums are still alive in the greenhouse, but my God, do them guys need a drink? Um, like myself and then what have I got here oh look at this that's a lovely white dahlia as well but oh just in time for a sunny day oh abundance this gives me joy I'll leave that one till maybe tomorrow have I got any more see the blackbirds it's a race the me and the blackbird for these and then what else actually this border. Do you remember? This was non-existent last year. So, sorry if it's quite harsh in the sun. When I came back from Hampton, I noticed this is the plant Karen gave me. I don't know what that is, let me zoom in. Sorry, the lighting is a bit harsh. Actually, Karen will know what that is, I'll ask her. And the lupins, if you remember, my friend's dad gave them to me back in March and I popped them in the border. There's my verbena actually, I've had that since 2020 as well. And here is the lupins. So I accidentally have a bit of a purple colour palette going on here. Um, this verbena has, I don't know if you can see, like white. This is a different kind of verbena. More verbena. And yeah, so it's looking, it's like full bloom. I never thought I'd say this but my camera is overheating and the batteries run flat. So I'm gonna put sun cream on, cause it's very hot. Well, I do have some on, but I feel like I need more, I've sweated it off. And I'm gonna eat my strawberries, have a drink, charge my camera, and then I'll be back.
would just like to document this moment that says 27 degrees for Dublin. This is very unheard of. And if you look, like tomorrow's not too bad. We're down to 22. Um, there's another hot day, Sunday, 26. Wow. I think they're calling it, is it, oh, I'm going to say it wrong, Azora High or something? I don't know. But there we are. 27 degrees currently for Dublin and I can vouch <laughs> for it feeling <laughs> like 27 degrees. And he's like, oh, a fresh flower bed for me to poop in. <laughs> Hope you enjoy it, B. I also left the seed heads for these alliums. Just gives them a bit more time. And they're cute. They look like giant Ginny Joes or something. Um, before I end this week's vlog, I want to... I think I have a potato. I think I have lots of potatoes. Potatoes. Um, which bag was it last night? I was watering these last night and I could feel... Hang on, you're super zoomed in. There she is. Oh my God. <gasps> it's a potato. Oh my God, the excitement. So a couple of weeks back. Now I'm just gonna cover that soil back over. A couple of weeks back, my niece pulled out a potato from the flap and it was tiny. And I was like, oh no, am I gonna have super tiny potatoes? But look at this gem. Now the only thing is it's not picking up on camera. There is a tiny bit of green just there and it could be because it was close to the top of the bag because I did read that green potatoes is not good. They can actually be poisonous. So just a little tip with the rest of their potatoes okay. But I'm like, oh my God, because they did get hard to grow. Um, as in, I noticed that they needed a lot of water. So what I've read is, this is my first time doing potatoes. These were planted in St. Patrick's Day just after. This foliage goes yellow and dies off, which is what it's doing now, and it's time to harvest. Um, so what I might do is I'm going to research a bit more, and I might just do one bag at a time and then eat them. But nothing like a mucky potato. I am buzzed with that. I've just sat down to end the vlog, but there's a pigeon. He obviously can't see me, so I'm currently hiding in the shade. Very sweaty today. I'm not even going to try and get me steps in today. Too hot. There's a nice cool breeze there though. <laughs> so that is how the garden is looking mid-July. Yeah, I'm still learning, filling gaps. And something I've noticed is not that gardening is easier in summer. But all of the things I did in spring, I'm now seeing the rewards of. Um, and May time. And all I have to do at the moment is water, deadhead, cut the grass. That pigeon's over there. He might walk over. I had seed out yesterday, actually. So that's my plan, is water, deadhead, and just keep going, start collecting seeds and stuff for next year. And hopefully by doing all of the deadhead, and especially with the dahlias and stuff, and there's plants that are due to kind of come up and open July, August, September time. There's echinacea still to come up. Um, there's loads of cosmos as well, so there should be lots of colour in the garden right through um, until the end of the season. The pigeon's gone. Actually, he's on top of the greenhouse. Can you see him up there? <laughs> I love the wood pigeons. And there's doves as well that come coloured doves. Now, I had an idea. I don't know how to execute the idea in the easiest way or if anybody would be even interested in doing it. But I was thinking, because so many of you guys watching are obviously like gardeners and sharing your bits and a couple of you were like oh, I'd love to show you my garden but I don't know how I was thinking what if we copied Gardener's World and you guys sent in videos of your garden like two to three four minute videos um, shot on your phone landscape and you just intro 
and if you have like a YouTube channel or an Instagram or whatever, you can share that so people can then go and follow. Um, or if you if you don't, that's fine. And I was thinking about that because I was like, that could be fun. And then I could insert them into Sunday's garden videos. I don't know if anybody would care for that. I think it could be really cool. And it's a great way for me to see your garden, but also for you to share it with everyone else. And I just think it kind of gives more of a like community feeling because I think sometimes YouTube can kind of be like one-sided like I know I interact like with you guys in my comments and stuff but um I thought that that might be something fun if it is something you'd be interested in just comment below saying yes thumbs up with a little plant emoji or something um, and then what I'll do is I'll figure out what's the best way I might set up like a separate email on my thing just for that and a way that you can share your video through like Google or OneDrive or WeTransfer or something like that. Let me know what you think. Yeah, I'm just gone dead sitting on that. That is me for this Sunday's video. Hit the subscribe button if you're not already. Cheeky thumbs up. Night pie. <laughs> Interrupted me. And I'll see you in next week's video.